Well, that was <coughs> I was found, I was having some cameramen film the installation of a of a precision landing facility that we were putting in right on the edge of the dry lake, and this saucer flew right over them and put down three little gear and landed out on the dry lake bed. And they went out to uh, <coughs> picked up their cameras and moved on out toward him filming. And he lifted off, put the gear back in the well, and climbed out at a very high rate of speed and disappeared. And so while I was uh, going through all the regulation books and finding out the number to call in Washington to report it, uh, I had them go over and develop the film. By the time they got back with the developed film, I was on the higher and higher and higher <coughs> level officer talking to me. Finally, with the colonel telling me to, uh, you know, when the film arrived at my desk to put it in the carrier pouch, there would be a courier there at my office by that time already, and, and they'd arrange for him to fly in our base airplane back to Washington with these films, and uh, do not run prints, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And about what he saw on a test pilot flight in 1952, Deke Slayton. As I closed on this thing, well, it looked like a, a weather balloon, and that's what I presumed it was. And I had plenty of gas and time, so I decided I'd just come back around and make a make a pass on it. And uh, I got around where I should have been coming back on this thing. All of a sudden, it didn't look like a balloon anymore. It looked like a, a saucer sitting on edge, about a 45 degree angle. I didn't have any gun camera film on board, unfortunately, or I'd have shot some pictures of it. And about that time, I guess whatever it was, for whatever reason, it took off climbing at about a 45 degree angle and and just accelerated and disappeared. And I, I obviously couldn't follow it with an old piston engine fighter. So uh, I turned around and went home. Nineteen fifty seven November. A missile engineer from Holloman Air Force Base and six other drivers observed a 500-foot glowing egg-shaped object between White Sands Proving Ground in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Electromagnetic effects from the egg craft disabled their car engines as it flew over U.S. Highway 54. One observer stated he believed the object was controlled by intelligence. This case was found in Blue Book files. 1964, April. A policeman observed an egg-shaped craft one mile south of Socorro, New Mexico. As he approached, he could see two humanoid figures. When the two humanoid figures saw the officer, they jumped back in their craft. It then rose 20 feet off the ground and zoomed up at a high rate of speed. The Air Force and investigation teams working the site found landing gear impressions. This case was found in Blue Book files and local newspapers. 1952, October, two air policemen reported a 160-foot-long egg craft over the main gate at Trough Field. The object had no wings. It was silver in color and glowing blue. The object at first flew over, turned east, and took off at a speed exceeding an F-86. The case was found in Blue Book Files. 1961, May, Military witnesses using a Polaris telescope reported seeing a large egg-shaped object the length of a B-52 fuselage over Fort Bliss, McGregor Range, Texas. They compared it to 160 feet long. The large egg descended, hovered over the base, then executed a 360-degree turn and departed. The incident lasted five minutes. This case can be found in Blue Book files. 1964, April. The crew of an RB-57 bomber observed a large egg-shaped object fly past their plane over New Mexico. The pilot immediately called Holloman and shared, We are not alone up here. I've got a UFO. It's egg-shaped and white. This case was found in April Bulletin, July 64.
My name is Jean-Charles Duboc. I am a retired Air France captain. During Air France flight 35-32 from Nice to London on 28 January 1994, I observed with my crew a UFO in broad daylight near Paris. And it looked like this, with a bank angle of 45 degrees. It seemed to be a huge flying disc. It stabilized and stopped moving. It was about 1,000 feet wide. The most incredible aspect is that it became transparent and disappeared in about 10 to 20 seconds. My co-pilot, Jeff Stewart and I, quickly realized that what we were seeing didn't resemble anything known to us, and we reported our sighting to Reims Traffic Control. My name is Jean-Charles Duboc. I am a retired Air France captain. During Air France flight 35-32 from Nice to London on 28 January 1994, I observed with my crew a UFO in broad daylight near Paris. And it looked like this, with a bank angle of 45 degrees. It seemed to be a huge flying disc. It stabilized and stopped moving. It was about 1,000 feet wide. The most incredible aspect is that it became transparent and disappeared in about 10 to 20 seconds. My co-pilot, Jeff Stewart and I, quickly realized that what we were seeing didn't resemble anything known to us, and we reported our sighting to Reims Traffic Control. Several people in Stephenville, Texas, a small rural town of about 15,000, 70 miles southwest of Fort Worth, witnessed what many are calling a UFO. James Fox, I know you've been probing this for a long time. We've never got an answer to this. Why do you think the Air Force doesn't want this out? Well, I mean, what are they going to say? Uh, we don't know what's flying around uh, in our airspace with yeah. impunity. Why can't, why can't they say that? I think that possibly could. I wish they would. And if the Air Force is listening tonight, why don't you tell us the truth? Why don't we t uh, take another break here? Uh, we're visiting with uh, James Fox, filmmaker in, in town, uh, doing research on the, uh, the UFOs and interviews. Uh, we'll take a break. We're back right after this. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dublin. In Dublin, the whole town showed up to discuss this sighting. My name is Steve Hudgens. I'm senior field investigator for MUFON. We're down here to investigate this extraordinary event. It was going so fast and it didn't make any noise that the light seemed to be streaming and breaking around it. Then 10 minutes later, it came back by, and that's when it had the two military jets chasing it. I've been a witness to this and give you all the information I can. You don't want to come forward and say anything because they'll say, oh, they're an idiot, because I've thought that before until I saw this. I guarantee you the jet, whoever's flying the jets, they had a visual on it. It was incredible. I listened to many witnesses and nice. then went to the editors. I used to thank the people that saw this and came on camera and said this kind of stuff. I thought, man, these guys need some help, you know? But it happened to me, and I can't change that. I had a hard time dealing with it, but... Uh, she looked out all the way in that direction, you didn't see the edge. Looking up, Ricky said he could not see the edge of the craft in any direction. You couldn't see the edge of it? Couldn't see the edge of it. But I didn't know this, it's bigger. You could have landed an airplane on that, I believe. God, it's incredible story. Nothing, no sound, no when it was hovering. Nothing when it moved from left to right, and nothing when it took off. And uh, Holding his rifle, and uh, sometimes actually looking through his scope, emotion, Ricky you know, stood uh, under the craft for about that, three minutes. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation, but... No, I certainly I, haven't. <laughs> I've been in it only very few times in my life, but I had to slow my mind down to, to actually think about what to do with it, the information that I was receiving for the first time. And uh, that's what I did. I studied it. You know, I've seen no nuts, bolts, rivets, seams, no welds. Uh, 
none of this. It, it looked like a piece of sheet metal. Um, you know, it, it wasn't shiny. It was a dull, uh, I don't know what you call it, matte finish maybe. Um, and this is what I had a hard time with, was if something was to leave, in my mind, it should pivot up and go like an airplane would. Yeah. This did not do that. This stayed completely flat and it went at a 45 degree angle away. And it took off at such a high rate of speed that no way I can describe it as if I would have blinked, I would have thought it just disappeared. On January 21st, 2008, Robert Powell and Glenn Schultz received radar data from the FAA. This image was created directly from that data. Each black dot, and there were over 140, represent radar confirmation of an unknown object whose flight path is seen heading towards Crawford Ranch. I just want to know what it is. You know, why, why was it here? What was it? Uh, is it ours? You know, that kind of thing. Although the military initially